in this section, we'll uh, go through the introduction to the machine learning. The root idea behind this is like an artificial intelligence, which enables the system to perform intelligent tasks through the set of rules. That is the major stream of this particular field. Uh, within that, there is a sub branch called machine learning, which is a process of learning from the data without using the complex rules. Uh, which involves the training a model from the data sets and uh, predicting the outcomes. Uh, generally, a, generally, the machine learning comes under the umbrella of AI. It's a sub-branch of AI. And furthermore, when we apply deep neural networks uh, to the machine learning, then ML at a larger scale gives us a deep learning with the involvement of artificial neural networks um, or deep neural networks such as CNN and et cetera. So there are three major branches. First one is AI, under that a sub-branch which is called machine learning, and furthermore uh, a sub-branch of machine learning which is called a deep learning. An artificial intelligence that that is kind of an approach which enables computers to perform the intelligence intelligent tasks, right? Uh, where computers are able to mimic the human behavior and perform some sort of intelligent computer com com uh, intelligent tasks. Whereas machine learning, um, it approaches to learn underlying pattern in the given data uh, or in the given features without being explicitly programmed, without being explicitly explicitly programmed. Right? There are several subtypes of machine types of machine learning, such as supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, semi-supervised machine learning, reinforcement mach uh, reinforcement learning, etc. Whereas a deep learning deep learning approaches uh, uh, that it is able to learn generally it is expected to learn the underlying underlying representations and patterns in the Q1 set of raw data without being explicitly programmed with an involvement of the neural networks such as let's say deep uh, neural networks will be used deep layers of uh, neural uh, networks will be used such as uh, the examples are con convolutional neural network recurrent neural network, generative adversarial network, et cetera. Right? So these are the three major branches which we used to use. Artificial intelligence in that the intelligence, that means what experiencing, experiencing or ability, ability to learn and understand and use it for deciding the future course or maybe future prediction. Uh, that's what we are going to understand. And AI, it generally, it enables the machine to do the intelligent tasks mimicking the human behavior, right? In uh, different tasks, such as, let's say, problem solving, a discovery of particular uh, conclusion or particular pattern, or maybe particular an outcome, or learning process, or dealing with uncertainties, or you know, there are different categories of AI, such as, let's say, problem solving using the search methods state space search or heuristic search randomized search or there are some sort of search based on particular set of rules all right mm. so there are a few more types of ai a few more categories of ai which we may touch upon if time permits machine learning with more and more as we have more and more data available these days because the information is easily available task of automatic discovery and learning of the patterns, they are important. And generally, this is handled by um, the machine learning. And uh, there is not much focus on, uh, on the, uh, the feature. In for machine learning, there is not much focus on the feature extraction or signal processing. But it's, like, it's not required as a prerequisite. Uh, but more emphasis would be on discovery and learning of the patterns by the machine. Right, it generally gives the ability to extract the patterns or you know, from the features or given data set. It's treated as uh, pat pattern learning for more like associated with the function learning kind of thing. It's such as let's say my input data set is X and maybe with some sort of features or label data which we can give if it is a supervised machine learning. So let's say my input data set is X and output printed output is Y and there is a function which function will try to map the input to the predicted output. That's the basic job of the machine learning. So let's say based on the input given data, my function tries to map 
the out input to the output and predict a particular output for a given input data. So that's the job of the machine learning. And the goal is generally that function uh, maps my x into y. That means it will try to predict a particular output y for a given data set input, for an, for an input given data set to the machine. Whereas if I look at the deep learning, the the task of learning for both the feature representation and also extract the pattern in machine learning we weren't extracting the we weren't i mean learning the features features were given along with the along you know, in the model itself whereas in deep learning this feature extraction is happening completely by the deep neural network uh, such as cnn whereas in machine learning this feature feature representation part is uh, is manual is manual it will try it will try to mimic the human way of learning and uh, it generally learns from the experiences based on the current experience it is store the out store the experience and then it will try to apply that experience in future and uh, it will try to extract the outcome based on uh, those experiences it will learn and try to improve the future outcome based on those experiences it will learn and try to uh, predict the future outcome we need not to specify everything in the beginning here. That's the advantage of the deep learning. Because if we have to specify everything to the model, once we have the diagrams and other things, it will be cleared. If we have to specify everything in the beginning, then it's a tedious job. And we don't want to do that. So we need not to specify everything in the beginning. And you understand, uh, so automatically, based on the experiences, there are a few more bullets. So generally, it is used when we wanted to learn the complicated concepts, right? We wanted to learn the learning the complicated concept out of, out of the simpler ones. So that based on the simpler ex, simple experiences, we try to uh, learn the complex uh, concepts. What is machine learning? Machine learning says that. It is an ability of the computers to learn without being explicitly programmed. Explicitly programmed means we need not to program our models because it's a job of the that model to generate the program or through the algorithm it will apply it and try to understand it. Such as let's say an example of preparing for the exam, right? Preparing for the exam. Okay. So what we do is generally students they will uh, feed their brain or when learning they'll try to read the material they'll try to look at the questions and what could be the probable answer probable answer and then they will try to prepare they'll try to go through the notes or slides online video lectures quizzes or pre previous year question papers etc and they will try to learn that this would be the question and then this would be the out outcome right this would be the question and this would be the outcome before the exam so they are trying to train their brain with the input as well as the output. They'll try to look at that. This could be the question. This would be the output. This would be the answer, right? And then this, they, they, they'll try to ap apply that logic to solve those kind of questions when they actually come in the exam, when they actually come in the exam. Similarly, machine learning model, right? In machine learning, we train the machine with data such as input and inputs and outputs both of them are given to the model and when the time comes during the test on the data we give only inputs such as let's say when the exam comes we give only questions but based on your previous training you will try to extract the answers which you have treated in your mind when reading or preparing for the exams right and then try to produce the outcomes right so and then it will try to achieve uh, the outcome based on your preparation that's the general idea of the machine learning that's the general idea of the machine learning how machine learning works how machine learning works machine learning where the system learns from the historical data so you give the past data input and it will try to build the prediction models Right? And then also sometimes we, if it is a supervised, sometimes we give uh, the label data. If it is unsupervised, we do not give the label data. Right? We give the inputs. And then 
it will try to build the prediction models and whenever it receives new data based on the previous in previous input data sets it will try to identify the patterns or maybe it will try to map along with the features and then it will try to predict the output from it and then it will try to predict the output from it right for the new given data for the new given data so generally we give the past input data to the machine learning algorithm this machine learning algorithm or program will learn from the past data set they'll build the logical models in terms of training and when new data is given it gives the output such as let's say during the exam we are preparing our mind will try to prepare that or build the logic and train the model so that during the exam when a question comes we try to pre produce the outcome based on our previous training based on our previous previous training there are several features of machine learning such as machine learning uses the data to detect the various patterns in the given data set it can learn from the past data and improve automatically it is a data driven technology and generally machine learning is like a data mining and it is also dealing with vast data sometimes right very large amount of data sets can be given to the algorithm why we use machine learning or where we use machine learning because since it has a capability of learning without being explicitly programmed there are there are multiple applications um, where many tasks can be done such as let's say object recognition where we wanted to identify a particular object such as let's say different types of fruits are given we try to segregate those that that's an apple or maybe strawberry or some something else um when we wanted to find out the summary of certain things right then also we can do prediction tasks can be done um classification is also possible such as let's say one zero sort of thing or maybe whether the person has a cancer or not um different clustering this is kind of a pattern uh, identification where different behaviors can be grouped into the clusters and then we can predict the outcome recommender systems such as let's say it will try to recommend uh, different items based on our past spending behaviors and there are many more applications there are many more applications of machine learning which can be extended in terms of deep learning also there is a difference between traditional programming and machine learning the basic difference between the traditional programming and machine learning is in traditional programming we give the data inputs and we write the program and we give it to to the machine right it will consume the data and give us the output using that program what we have written so we have to write the program here we feed the data and program and run it on a machine to get the output and run it on a machine to get the output whereas in machine learning we feed data input and output right such as let's say preparing for the exam so we give a, a mind a question and the answer a question and the answer a question and the answer so like our mind would prepare for it right so we do not write the or do not give the program as an input to the machine so machine this that's the major advantage of machine learning complex programming would be taken care of by the machine itself right and when the real input a real input is given when the output is not known then based on the previous input and output experiences machine will try to produce my outcome and generally the program is also um, generated by the model during the training process right and what does exactly learning means for the computer such as let's say learning from the experiences with reference to or with respect to some class of tasks if if its performance in a given task let's say improve the experience such as let's say as we have said if i'm doing a particular task and if i get a reward as an outcome i store it as an experience and i'll continue doing in that particular direction on the contrary if i am doing a particular task and if i get a penalty or if i do not get any reward i will stop going in that particular direction and try to tune in other direction and try to accomplish higher reward in the next one such as let's say learn from the experience e with reference to some class of task t and performance measure p 
if the performance at that particular task t is is higher then it will improve with my it will improve my experience correct so such as let's say reward is higher then it will say that's a good experience we should continue in that particular direction there are several applications of machine learning such as let's say automatic language translation medical diagnosis medical diagnosis stock market predictions uh, fraud detections um, there are many email spam detections self-driving car product recommendations um, on e-commerce uh, these online sites where we used to do the shopping traffic prediction speech recognition image recognition etc these are the major application major applications of the machine learning these are the major applications of the machine learning there is a difference between machine learning and deep learning a specific difference between machine and learning and deep learning let's let's see such as let's say uh, the upper one of the image is part a is the machine learning well let's say let's say we are giving the input images such as let's say car or bus school etc and we have to do the manual feature extractions feature extractions such as let's say we can give the dimension of a car let's say a few meters long um, bus could be a bit bit more longer than the car and scooter could be a smaller version right so this length can be taken as a feature and that we have to manually extract it and give it to the classification algorithm based on the input data and given the features classification algorithm will try to segregate them into different classes such as let's say class one belongs to cars class two belongs to buses class three belongs to scooters right and then when we give new input it will segregate them into different classes and predict the outcome or predict the output that this would be a skewed scooter this input image is a car or this input image is a bus whereas in deep learning this feature extraction and classification part is automated using deep neural networks such as let's say application of cnn convolutional neural network so this feature extraction it will try to extract the feature from the image itself and then it will try to segregate them into different classes that this was car this was a scooter this was a bus right so this this is automated using deep learning whereas application of deep number of neural net network layers is a, again a unique feature of my deep learning such as let's say we use in cnn that's the major difference between machine learning and deep learning What's the difference between neural network and deep learning? The concept of deep learning was first originated from the neural network. Like such as a good example of deep neural network is like feed forward, forward neural network that we will see. Um, back, generally back propagation is a workhorse uh, algorithm for learning the parameters of uh, feed forward neural network. A back propagation did not work well for the networks having more than a smaller number of having 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 more than a smaller number of hidden layers um sometimes insufficient data leading it will lead us towards the overfitting and difficulty in training these are some of the difficulties with, with the model the major difference the major difference between neural network and deep learning is in neural network you can see the number of layers or number of hidden layers are lesser Whereas in deep learning, a uh, number of neural networks layers are many, right? Which are used for feature extractions and predictions, feature extractions and predictions. Here the links, they carry the signals from one node to another node, boosting the damping of them according to the weights and biases, right? So it will, for each, uh, for going from each node to the next, next node of the next layer, it will try to adjust my weights and uh, those, those link weights uh, and it will try to fire up a particular relevant neural network nodes and it will try to output uh, the given input right so for it will try to predict the output for a given input such as let's say that particular image belongs to a particular person that would be predicted here that that's the person that's the person based on my training that's the major difference so here the number of layers are more in deep learning compared to the and then right that's my major difference between neural networks and deep learning 
Now, if I say some of the people they used to classify into four sub branches, such as let's say AI is the larger umbrella, umbrella um, which try to simulate the imitation of the human intelligence in the machine, which is considered as AI. Programming the machines to the uh, programming machines to mimic the human behaviors, uh, such as like thinking, learning, problem solving. These are these are the major tasks of AI. Whereas, where furthermore, uh, the ML is the methodology of training the system to to be able to learn from the past data to make the accurate decisions and predictions. That's that's done by the machine learning. Uh, a sub branch between deep learning and machine learning is introduced at artificial neural networks, um, where the ML systems they are inspired by the human brain neural networks, and uh, they are they consist of uh, the neurons that are connected in one layer to learn the relationships between inputs and outputs. Whereas deep learning, which engage engage which generate deep learning engages the uh, large number of neural networks with multiple layers to extract the higher level of input features to give a good representation between input and output, right? So this could also be a possibility. This is how also people used to represent AI. Then the sub-branch of AI is machine learning. Then ANN comes as a sub-branch further of ML. And finally, the deep, deep learning, which is again a sub-branch of artificial neural network. That's how these people used to present. That's the basic idea. There are several um, there are so, several applications such as let's say AI is generally used in natural language processing, visual per perception, um, automatic programming, intelligent robot, and then machine learning. There are multiple algorithms such as let's say linear slash logistic regression, k-means, uh, support vector machine, principal component analysis, random forest, k nearest neighbor, uh, decision tree. So on in neural networks, some of the examples are such as let's say Boltzmann neural network, MLP. Um, in deep net, deep in deep learning, in deep learning, we used to go with CNN, RNN, GAN, or DBN. We'll we'll explore them one by one in subsequent sessions. The types of machine learning, the major types of machine learning are supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning semi-supervised machine learning, which is the combination of supervised and unsupervised models, and reinforcement learning. Supervised machine learning states that it is a type of machine learning in which machines are trained using well-labeled training data. And based on that data, machine will try to predict the output. The labeled data, that means the input is already tagged with a correct output first such as let's say in exams for preparing for the exams we try to prepare we try to take a question and we try to prepare the answer for that question right so that input is tagged with that particular correct output or correct answer that that question is tagged with that correct answer and then similarly we keep preparing for the exam so similarly the input data is already tagged with the correct output and when Training comes when the training data is provided to the machine, it will try to predict the output correctly, such as let's say we trained ourselves using those questions and answers during the exams. And now during, uh, sorry, before the exams. And now during the exam, only the questions were given. And under the supervision, we have to write the answers to those questions, right, based on our previous training experiences. So that's how we are going to output for those questions. It applies the same concepts of students. They learn under the supervision of a teacher. It supervised machine learning is generally a process of providing input data as well as the correct output data to the machine learning model, and which aims to find a mapping function, which will try to map the input variable x with an output variable y. So for an for a given input or for a given in input for that particular variable, the input which we have given, the machine will try to predict the outcome or output variable y. Sometimes this is often this is called as independent variable x, and y is known as dependent variable on that particular input because it's a predicted output. 
how supervised machine learning works right how supervised how supervised learning works in supervised learning the models they are trained using the label data sets where uh, the models they learn about each type of data let's say different let's say in this particular figure right so different label data sets are given such as let's say different types of shapes are given as an input like square rectangle triangle polygon etc now first step that we have to train the model for each shape right so now let's say if i take an example of a particular shape let's say a square it will have four equal sides right four sides and all these sides they are equal that's my feature that's my label right so here i will label that square will have four equal sides where square will have four equal sides and it will it will label that particular shape as a square similarly if i take a triangle it will have three sides then i'm going to label it if there are three sides then it's a triangle similarly i can do it for six sides for a given hexagon right so these are my labels which are given to the input so my model has the knowledge about the data now this is the, these are the labels and this is the real data right so now i'll give the data as an input and the labels to the model now based on that it will try that okay if the input is this kind of and it will try to count the sides it will say there are six sides so it's going to be hexagon if i give square as an input it will try to compare or map here it will say there are four sides four equal sides then it's going to be a square similarly if i give a triangle it will try to compare in this labels and then it will say it's a triangle and then it will say it, it's a triangle now after training so that's my training phase now after training we test our model using the test data set so we give some sort of let's say percentage let's say out of 100 percent of data sets we use 90 percent for training 10 percent of for testing you can use 80 percent of 80 percent for training and 20 percent for testing also so i am going to give my test input data and then this time will not give uh, so this time using that previous experiences it will try to identify that my test my my test data set is a square or is a triangle and higher accuracy which means my model is trained and most likely it will predict the correct outcome most likely it will predict the correct out outcome that's my basic flow of my supervised machine learning that's the basic workflow of a supervised machine learning in real world supervised machine learning they are often used in risk assessment image classification fraud detection spam filtering etc these are the some of the applications of my supervised machine learning the algorithms what we use for for supervised machine learning such as let's say decision tree random forest knn logistic regression etc they fall under the category of uh, supervised machine learning the major steps involved in supervised machine learning are first we have to determine the type of training data set we have to determine the type of training data set after that we have to gather or collect the labeled training data after that we have to gather or collect the labeled training data and then we have to split the training data set into the train uh, we have to split the data set into training data set test data set sometimes we use the validation data sets also right let's say 80 percent for training data set 10 percent for testing and 10 percent for validation validation often we use uh, just for training and testing that is also okay how we model it then the next step is to determine the input features which is nothing but uh, the knowledge about the data set such as this labels right such as this label what we discussed so determine the input features of training sets training data set which should have enough knowledge so that the model can accurately predict the outcome so that the model can accurately predict the outcome determine the suitable algorithm for the model um, that means such as let's say what, what we are going to use here uh, such as let's say support vector machine decision tree random forest etc once the algorithm is identified we can execute the algorithm on the training data set and we then we have to evaluate the accuracy of the model by providing the test set test data 
now let's say if the accuracy is 95 percent or 98 percent that's a good good accuracy now out of 198 percent of time it's going to predict the outcome correctly which means my model is accurate which means my model is accurate which means my model is accurate so that's the those are the basic steps those are the those are the basic steps of my machine learning workflow or machine learning how this supervised machine learning works there are two types of supervised machine learning there are two types of supervised machine learning algorithms such as let's say regression algorithms and classification algorithms regression algorithms generally they are used when there is a relationship between input and input variable and output variable and generally it is used for so there are two types of supervised machine learning algorithms such as that the regression and classification and regression algorithms they are generally used if there is a relationship between input variable and output variable it is used for predicting the continuous variables that means let's say your event is continuous such as let's say weather forecasting right temperature movements they are continuous market trends they are continuous let's say stock price movement they are continuous right every bits of time we got a particular price and we know that that's how it's going to be moving further there are some of the popular regression algorithms which we often use under supervised machine learning that is a linear regression um, regression freeze uh, non-linear regression bayesian learning regression polynomial regression there are some of classification algorithms are also available, such as let's say um, we apply these algorithms for identifying a categorical output, such as let's say yes or no, or one or zero identification, or true or false, true or false kind of situation. Let's say a person is sick or he's not sick, or a person has a can has a cancer or not, or maybe a person is male or female. That kind of outcomes we used to use. Uh, that kind of uh, when we have that kind of task, we use to use the classification algorithms. Mainly, it is used for spam filtering, um, right? And the algorithms what we use under that particular classification ca categories like random forest, decision trees, logistic regression, support vector machines, etc. We will explore them. The advantages and disadvantages of the super supervised machine learnings are um, some of the advantages, such as let's say model can predict the output based on the prior experiences so we need the experiences we need the prior experiences in order to predict the correct outcome in supervised machine learning we can have an exact idea about the classes of the objects we know that particular object belongs to a particular class through the labels right and in supervised machine learning it will help us to solve various real world problems such as let's say fraud detection spam filtering based on particular label we can identify that that's a particular spam mail and then put it in the spam folder right some of the disadvantages of supervised machine learning are um, such as let's say they are not suitable for handling the complex tasks we will not be able to handle the complex task extreme complex task using this we need to apply some other sort of algorithms such as let's say deep learning algorithms or something else supervised machine learning cannot predict the correct output if the test data is different from the training data and right? if the test data, if the model is trained on something else and if the testing a testing input data is something different then it cannot predict it because it's like labeled data set it has to know the data sets and its feature com features completely then and only then it will be able to identify otherwise it will not be able to identify the training data set Training requires a lot of computational time. It takes a lot of computation time. Time complexity is higher or larger in supervised machine learning. Um, we need to have enough knowledge about the classes of the objects. That means we need to know that each pattern of, or each, each feature, feature of my particular data. But I, I mean, most of the real time uh, situations, we will not have that kind of knowledge about the objects. In that particular situation, supervised machine learning is not adequate. It's not, it's not adequate. We have to apply a different type of learning. There is another category, unsupervised machine learning. We have seen that supervised machine learning in which models were trained using the label data.
Whereas under unsupervised machine learning, we do not have labeled data set. We need to find the hidden patterns from the given data set. We need to find the hidden patterns from the given data set. So we can solve such type of cases uh, using uh, using this uh, to solve such kind of cases where we do not have labeled data sets. We do not have enough knowledge about the data. We apply unsupervised machine learning techniques. We apply unsupervised machine learning techniques. What is unsupervised machine learning? Unsupervised machine learning is a machine learning technique in which models are not supervised using training data sets models are not supervised using training data sets instead the models are allowed to find the hidden patterns at their own and identify the insights from the given data it's similar to like human brains when we are unknown to a particular situation we try to learn through that situation we try to identify the pattern and we try to avoid that situation or we try to follow that particular situation in the direction where we get a better outcome unsupervised machine learning is a type of machine learning in which models are trained using unlabeled, unlabeled data sets and are allowed to act on that data without any supervision um, unsupervised machine learning cannot be directly applied to regression to a regression or classification problem because uh, unlikely uh, supervised machine learning we we here in this particular case we do not have input we do not have any labels uh, to the data so we uh, the knowledge about the data is limited the goal of unsupervised machine learning is to identify the underlying structure of that particular data set group that data data according to the similarity index and uh, uh, put them in a particular group or something like that so those let's say some of the data they are similar some of the items they are similar identify the pattern and club them up in a particular group identify the pattern so in that way it'll it'll work and represent the data set in a compressed format so that's the major goal of my unsupervised machine learning such as let's say if i give the images different types of images let's say cats and dogs to a machine right and the algorithm is never trained upon uh, the given data set, which means uh, it does not have any idea about the feature of the data set. It does, we haven't given any labels, right? We haven't given any label. That's the job of my un unsupervised machine learning model to identify the pattern and put them into different groups and extract the outcome when the new input is given, right? So the task of unsupervised machine learning algorithm is to identify the image feature at their own. It is expected to do its job its own without any you know, supervision. That's the basic idea. Generally, unsupervised machine learning algorithm will perform this task by applying the clustering, um, clustering algorithms, or it will try to do the clustering of the images into the different groups according to the similarity such as let's say this dog will have a larger dimension than the cat so it will try to segregate all larger dimension images as a group in a group uh, which gives me that that's the group belong that's the group which belongs to the dogs and then the cats they will have a smaller dimension and uh, it will try to frame another group and it will say that's my the second uh, group where all small dimension dimension images which are belonging to the cat they are placed so it's kind of a pattern identi identification from that why we use unsupervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning is generally helpful in identifying the insights from the data identify the patterns identify uh, the the insights of the data and uh, it's kind of a more or less similar to human learns to think by their own experiences so it's nearby the real ai real real ai and unsupervised machine learning they work on unlabeled and uncategorized data which makes unsupervised learning more important more important because in real world we do not always have inputs with corresponding outputs we do not always have inputs with corresponding outputs to solve such cases we apply unsupervised machine learning to solve such cases we apply unsupervised machine learning let's take a look at the working flow or a workflow of unsupervised machine learning let's say we have given the input raw data to the model and here there are no labels or no features are given as an input and only the raw data images are given unlabeled data 
model will try to identify the patterns let's say based on the dimension here generally dog will have a larger dimension than the cat it will try to interpret that one particular set of images they are slightly bigger whereas a second set of images they are slightly smaller that's the pattern which model identifies and then it will try to segregate those patterns into different groups such as let's say la larger dimension elements which are categorized as dogs and smaller dimension and the elements they are categorized as cats right so when that's how the training happens and when when uh, we have given the unlabeled input data which means it is not categorized and outputs are also not given and then now it's like unlabeled input data is when next time when we um, unlabeled input data is given to the machine learning model it will firstly try to interpret my raw data as we say based on the dimensions smaller dimensions the group belongs to the cats uh, larger dimension the group belongs to the dogs and it will try to identify my hidden patterns once this is done it will try to apply the suitable algorithm once this is done it will try to apply the suitable algorithms such as let's say k means clustering or decision tree and when you give the new input that algorithm will try to divide or try to identify or try to put that particular image in a particular group of that particular object based on the similarity and differences and it will try to predict my outcome and it will try to predict my outcome that's how the unsupervised machine learning algorithms work that's that's how the unsupervised machine learning algorithm works right there are two major types of unsupervised machine learning algorithms such as let's say clustering and association clustering and association clustering is a method of grouping the objects into different clusters such as those objects which are having more similarity or they are high, highly similar they are kept in a particular single group um, and those who are dissimilar or th those who have dissimilarity they will be placed in the other group right second group so based on similarities it will divide my inputs into the groups into the clusters that's how the clustering algorithm works clustering analysis it finds the commonalities between the data and categorize data objects and categorize them uh, as per the presence and absence of these commonalities right and as per this commonalities whereas uh, on the contrary uh, association association uh, rule is like uh, this algorithm kind of a this kind of a rule is an is an is an unsupervised learning method association is an unsupervised learning method which is used to find the relationships between the variables in a larger database such as let's say it will try to determine the set of items that occur together in a data set such as let's say it will try to determine the a set of items that occur together that occurs together in the data set such as let's say if i am it is morally it is morally applicable to the marketing strategy for more you know, for more effective like i say if i am trying to purchase breads right most likely i'll purchase jams or jam also right or maybe different flavor of flavors of jams so it's kind of a bread jams or bread butter together they will go right together they will go right so that's a combination or a particular behavior where set of items that occur to that occur, those occurs those occur together in a particular data set right so typically the example of association is the rule of market basket analysis right how the you know, customers are purchasing what items they are purchasing together jointly and then it will try to suggest similar associated items when they purchase one particular item that's the basic workflow of my association rule there are several algorithms of unsupervised machine learning such as let's say k means clustering k nearest neighbors hierarchical clustering anomaly uh, reduction neural networks principal component analysis independent component analysis a priori algorithm singular value decomposition etc let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of unsupervised machine learning unsupervised machine learning is used for more complex tasks when uh, when we have more complex tasks such as let's say which we couldn't do using supervised machine learning in such cases let's say for an example we do not have enough knowledge about the features of the data right here we data set is unknown and we wanted to 
we want it, our model to learn itself and identify the pattern and give me the output, right? So in such case, when we don't have label data, label input data, then we use machine learning, uh, unsupervised machine learning. That's an advantage. Unsupervised machine learning is preferable as it is easy to get unlabeled data in comparison with the label data. Sometimes in the real world, we do not have um, enough features or labels available for that particular data set. So in such case, we can give um, unlabeled data sets to unsupervised machine learning algorithms and let it find the pattern and identify the outcome. There are certain disadvantages also, such as let's say unsupervised machine learning is intrinsically more dif difficult than supervised machine learning algorithms as it does not have corresponding output, right? It does not have corresponding output as a label. The result of unsupervised machine learning algorithm might be lesser, it, it can be less accurate as compared to unsupervised machine learning algorithms, such as because uh, the data is not labeled, data is not labeled, and the algorithms do not know the exact outcome in advance. Exact outcome in advance is kind of a training on the job. We put a, put a put an employee on the training and give him some tasks, and it doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anything, and he'll try to do that job and learn based on the experience, identify the patterns, exploring at it at, it, at its own. So training on the job concept is more applicable here. The basic difference between uh, supervised and unsupervised machine learning was like a supervised machine learning. That means we give input along with the labels and uh, under the supervision a model learns. Whereas in unsupervised machine learning, we give unlabeled data and there is no supervision. That's the basic difference. That's the basic difference. This, this particular table summarizes the differences between supervised and unsupervised unsupervised machine learning such as let's say supervised machine learning algorithms they are trained using label data whereas unsupervised machine learning algorithms they are trained using unlabeled data supervised machine learning algorithms they generally take direct feedback to check if it's if it's predicting if its predictions are correct or not whereas unsupervised machine learning model doesn't take any feedback Supervised machine learning model predicts the outcome, whereas unsupervised machine learning algorithm, it tries to identify the patterns in the data. That's the major goal. And then predict the outcome by clustering into the different groups. In supervised machine learning, the data, input data is provided to the model along with the output, right? As the labels we, we used to say, that's let's say this is the inputs as a square and then I mean, this is the input with four facets and it is known as square. That's the outcome also, like uh, preparing for the exam. We have the question, this is the answer, we prepare. We have the question, this is the answer, we prepare. That's how supervised machine learning works. Where in unsupervised machine learning, only input data is provided to the model, no labels. The goal of supervised machine learning is to train the model so that it can predict the outcome when it is given a new data, whereas the goal of unsupervised machine learning is to find the hidden patterns and useful insights from the unknown data set. Supervised machine learning needs supervision to train the model, whereas unsupervised machine learning does not need any supervision to train the model. Supervised machine learning can be categorized into the classification and regression problems, whereas unsupervised machine learning can be classified into the clustering and association, association problems. Supervised machine learning can be used for those cases where we know the inputs as well as corresponding outputs nicely in advance. Unsupervised machine learning can be used for those cases where, where we have only input data and no corresponding output data is available to us. That means the knowledge is limited. The patterns are unknown. And we wanted machine to be identifying the patterns as its own and segregate the uh, data. Supervised machine learning model produces an accurate results than unsupervised machine learning module models because during the supervision with the labeled data sets, it can accurately identify that that's going to be the outcome. Whereas here we are more focused on identifying the pattern uh, with an acceptable accuracy. Uh, supervised machine learning is not close to the true AI as in this particular form, we first train the model on each data and then only it can predict the outcome. So we need the labeled data set. Whereas unsupervised machine learning is more closer towards the true AI, 
because it tries to mimic the human intelligence based on the experiences identifying the patterns and predicting the outcome right it includes various algorithms such as uh, let's say linear regression logistic regression support vector machine multi class classification etc decision trees etc whereas in unsupervised machine learning it includes like a clustering knn a priori algorithms etc these are the major differences between unsupervised and supervised machine learning